Hello again, everybody. This is Michael K4EST. And did you see that? It looks like I got a bug coming through there. All right. Today I'm going to have a look at this Heathkit IG42 laboratory generator. Is there a call it here or signal generator? Uh, really, the difference in this and you know what they're calling difference in this and a regular RF signal generator is this one was a factory made unit it's supposed to be a little bit better spec and uh, the other ones were you know so it was a kit form and you can see I've still got a lot of cleanup to do with this it's not uh, now I have went through and started getting a little ahead of myself there and just kind of see how it's going to look you can see a difference there in that knob. Um, now, see the pointer on here. All these knobs have got pointers. I've took these pointers out, and they got little. You can see that little springs in them. It's snapped down inside. We got a slot in there. And they come around and they just slide down inside there. And I ain't gonna put it back all the way in right this second, but once it gets in there, you know you'll have a pointer on it because I want to finish clean up this knob a little bit more. But uh, this is another one that I got at a ham fest. I don't know, you know, years and years ago. I do remember turning it on one time. You know, plugged it in, turned it on. Let it warm up. Turn the HF rig on, and just sit here and tune to it until I heard it. Okay, it's working, and that's about as far as I ever got with it. I remember, and it got put back in storage with the many, many other projects and toys I like to buy. So. I decided I think I want to restore this one and put it on the bench too and actually use it some. You know, uh, it's not going to be perfect and it ain't accurate. I may even use it with a, uh, probably use it with a signal generator, cheat a little bit, but um, I want to do that. Uh, well, first of all, I want to show you here what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this out, this microphone connector here, type connector like they used to use. I'm going to change that to a BNC. I'll probably leave this for now anyway. Um, I think this is for the external modulation. Um, <clears throat> I'll leave that there. But this thing's supposed to cover from, oh, uh, was it about 100? About 100 kilohertz, 100 kilocycles all the way up to past 30 I think the book I've actually got the original manual with this one this is one that's really hard to find online uh, and I looked and looked and looked and then I went and looking through some of my books and oh it was so nice to find the actual manual with the big fold outs and everything um, but I think it goes up to you know 34 um, and it's pretty accurate you know for the time uh, of course, I go through an alignment on it and stuff, and I'll still be using it with the, like I said, with the frequency counter. But I still want to get this as everything here as close and accurate as I can. Like I said, I'll change this out most likely. Yeah, I know I'm going to change that out. Definitely clean, it, finish cleaning it up really good. So um, let's uh, take the uh, oh, one other thing. This thing I think was it five. Five microvolts to a hundred thousand microvolts output. So what up to maybe negative seven dBm or something. So good enough for most things. So uh, let me get the screws out of this thing and I'll be right back.
All right. I'm back here, and I've got... I went ahead and took that out. So it's got a lot of good shielding. Uh, wow, boy, this thing sort of doesn't need a lot of cleaning. Let's look at this side first here. Maybe a little bit here. All right. We got a couple tubes here. Here's a couple of for calibration here. A couple of pots. This is your filter choke. You got a capacitor here on these can caps. Now what I'm going to do with that one is I'll go under the bottom. Let's just go over that in a minute. Got a couple tubes here. I've got a 12AU7 here, and this looks like this would be the OB2. Yep. Your voltage regulator. And it's got a 12, let's see, this is 12AU7. And, okay. Alright, and then inside this grid here. We've got a couple of tubes. That'd be a 6AF4 and a 6AV5. Okay, for the RF. Let's see. Um, let's set this up here. Okay. Let's yeah, start up here. Let's have a look at this here. All right. I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven capacitors right off the bat. It's going to have to go. So I'll be recapping all those. Check these resistors. There's a couple of germanium dives there. They should be fine. Um, double check all the wiring. Get the blow all these cobwebs out and all that. I'll clean the contacts inside these potentiometers here. Um, that ain't gonna be too bad there. Clean the contacts in here in these switches. Okay, now let's get it, look at the other side of it. All right, um, that's really bright with that gold. I guess you can see right there what I'm going to be changing out. This selenium rectifier, another one. Well, they liked these things back in that time, didn't they? <clears throat> okay, yeah, this has definitely got to go. And I think I was looking this thing over. Um, I was looking at the schematic uh, earlier, and I think I'm going to take this just wire I've got this connected here that goes to the, you know, where the plug comes in. You got AC coming in. I think this. I'm going to replace instead of just replacing it with something like a 1N404, 407 or whatever. I'm going to replace it with a bridge. And I don't have a bridge. I thought I did. I thought I had two or three. Well, I do, but it ain't the voltage I like. So I've got a bunch of 1N5008s. Um, that's definitely overkill, but... I may take four of those and make a bridge out of this instead of because with just this and then I was looking at the schematic and then I did some reading and uh, research and a lot of people said they got a lot of hum with that and they would recommend maybe changing it out or whatever and which it's a good idea I mean not just changing this out but actually going to full wave bridge so I think I'm going to try going to full wave bridge and I'm still going to you know put in the dropping resistor um, try to figure out that like a 5 watt resistor or something and drop it and 
get the voltage back to you know what it wants in the book and should probably be okay without it but we'll do that okay and then let's look in here Carefully, and like I said, very carefully. And I dropped one. Take these out. I hate losing these little nuts. This is only a 632, so it wouldn't be hard to replace. You see this? Somebody had a string there at one time. I guess it was strings rotted, dry rotted. So you can pull this open. So it tells me there's a adjustment back in there. We can get this off very carefully. Should come off. Yeah, I like how tight it is. I like how it's nice and shielded everywhere. Yeah. There it is. Right there is the adjustment. Let's see if I can zoom in on this here. See the capacitor in there moving? I'm going to turn the front. So, what's getting seen on the camera here? There is. Here, I see one capacitor it's got to go. Let's see if I can turn this so. There's another capacitor it's got to go. Let me keep turning. You see that up there? There's an electrolytic back in there that's got to go. So, yep, it's got quite a, quite the little collection there of uh, capacitors and stuff to do, to change out, but I'll get them all changed out and get this thing cleaned up and then I'll come back and uh, we'll have a look at it when that's all done. Until then, this is Michael, KE4EST, 73.